tears for Grenfell, emotional Adele joins Kate, William and Harry at memorial service at St. Paul's six months after 71 people died in horror blaze. But local Tory councillors are told to stay away. Members of the royal family shed tears for the victims of the Grenfell Tower fire alongside their bereaved relatives at a poignant and emotional memorial service today. Princess Charles William and Harry were joined by the Duchess of Cornwall and Duchess of Cambridge at St. Paul's Cathedral for the service, with Kate clearly battling tears as tributes were made to those who lost their lives in the tragedy. Celebrities with links to the area were also among the 1,500 guests, including Adele, who had many friends in the Kensington community, who was seen openly weeping as she embraced others in the congregation. She was joined by fellow singer Marcus Mumford and his actress wife Carrie Mulligan, with both also seen crying as they struggled to keep their emotions under control. After the service, the royals were quick to engage with the families, providing comforting words and a friendly face for them to talk to and share their grief with. It comes after Boris Johnson branded London Mayor Sadiq Khan's response to the tragedy spineless after Tory councillors were blocked from attending today's service. The Foreign Secretary launched a furious attack on the London mayor who he said should share some of the blame over why many victims have still not been rehoused. And he hit out at the decision to block Tory councillors in Kensington and Chelsea from attending even though Labour councillors were invited. The blaze at the 24-storey tower in June killed 71 people and injured a further 70 while making hundreds homeless and is believed to have been started by a faulty fridge freezer before spreading rapidly. A number of politicians did attend the service, including Theresa May, Jeremy Corbyn, and Community Secretary Sajid Javid. Mrs May was spotted arriving via rear entrance but it is not known whether this had anything to do with the public backlash she faced for a delayed reaction over the tragedy in June or the banning of the local Tory politicians. As the service ended, the Grenfell banner was held aloft and carried out of the cathedral followed by survivors and bereaved holding white roses and photographs of their loved ones. Maria Jafari, 38, and her family met Prince Harry at the end of the service. Harry told her mother, Fatima Jafari, 78, that she must have been very proud of her daughter for speaking at the front, before congratulating her for taking part. As Mrs. Jafari began sobbing for her husband, who was 82 when he died, the prince asked an interpreter, just tell her I am so incredibly sorry for her loss. Her daughter said, it's very, very hard. Still she, my mother, cries, every day, every second when we are talking about our father, all the memories come out again. It's six months and it's still very hard for us. Meanwhile the Bishop of Kensington told the community at the heart of the Grenfell Tower fire of his hope that the tower may one day become a symbol of the time we learned a new and better way. The right relevant Graham Tomlin said six months on there were so many unresolved issues and questions, but he trusted that the truth would bring justice and heal the divides in society the tragedy had laid bare. He told survivors and those who lost family members in the blaze that he hoped that Thursday's National Memorial Service would assure them that the nation had not forgotten them. Local MP Amadent Code wore a green scarf to the ceremony a color which has come to symbolize the tragedy in North Kensington. Earlier the Labour MP told the Press Association, it's a day of national mourning for something that happened in our neighborhood and that means a lot to the survivors and the bereaved. The recognition that people from all walks of government are going to come down and grieve with them. That's hugely important and will mean a lot to people. I think emotions are still very raw, very, very raw, and it's as if it happened yesterday for a lot of people. Her Labour colleague from Kensington and Chelsea Council, Robert Atkinson, said it was right that local authority leaders avoided the ceremony. Mr Atkinson represents the ward in which Grenfell Tower stands and publicly clashed with former council leader Nicholas Paget brown before his resignation. He said, I think the council needs to stay in the council and do the things it should be doing. This event is for the community of North Kensington and the people of North Kensington. I'm here, in a humble capacity as a representative of that community and I have to say that the conservative group are not trusted by the people of North Kensington. He criticized the council for the speed at which survivors were being rehoused, with many still without a permanent home six months on. Bishop Tomlin told the congregation at St. Paul's Cathedral, My hope, my prayer is that today we will pledge ourselves to change, 
from a city where we didn't listen, where we didn't hear the cries of our neighbors because we were too wrapped up in our own interests and prosperity, to create a new type of life together, where we are turned not inwards to ourselves, but outwards towards each other, a society known for listening, compassion and love. In years to come, our hope is that the name of Grenfell will not just be known as a symbol of sorrow, of grief or injustice, but a symbol of the time we learned a new and better way, to listen and to love. Reflecting on the immediate aftermath of the fire, the bishop said the response from all over London, the UK and beyond had been extraordinary, while the emergency services worked tirelessly. He said he was struck by the variety of ethnicities, religions and ages that had turned out to help, calling it a moment we all lost our fear of each other. He said, it was a glimpse of what our society could be like, a place where we were for a brief moment more concerned about our neighbor's well-being than we were about our own. As we come to the end of this difficult year, as we celebrate Christmas, as we move into a new year, nothing can remove the memory of that night, nor do we want to forget those dearly loved people who were lost. And yet my hope and prayer is that this new year can bring new hope of a future a vision of a city where we lose our self-obsession and listen and learn from places and people that we wouldn't normally think of reaching out to. Clary Mendy, who lost two relatives in the fire and helped shape the service, called on Prime Minister Theresa May to agree to a decision-making panel to sit alongside the chairman of the public inquiry. She said of the service, There were some powerful words, I'm very proud of the bishop for acknowledging the truth. I just hope, you know. The world was listening to this, I really hope there can be some changes in humanity for the world today. Very powerful words, I'd just like to see the action that's going to follow. She added, I strongly believe in faith, and let's hope this is the beginning of a bright new day for us all. Ems Mindy was one of those who met the Duke of Cambridge as the service drew to a close. She said William had asked to be invited to the service, and that she had asked him if he would consider becoming a patron of her new group. Humanity for Grenfell. She said, He's shown a lot of concern, I can see the compassion and the empathy he has. It's his borough and he feels it. Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn said after the service he wanted to change things for the understandably angry residents. He said, Out here, the questions still have to be answered why? Why have so many families not been rehoused? Why are so many still going through such stress of not knowing what the future holds? That came from all of those that delivered prayers and messages today. We have to ensure they have been rehoused. The inquiry has to come up with some very strong answers to some very tough questions about the building, the cladding and the performance of the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. Ben Geddes, whose close friend and confidant Sheila died in the fire hailed the royal's presence as a constant strand of support through the uncertainty of the past six months. The 48-year-old said healing would take a long time and that the service and people's faith is an important part of what's getting them through. Mr. Gittis said he had been immediately struck by the way the tragedy touched the nation, praising the almost immediate spontaneous, visceral response of people wishing to help. He said, another unifying force was the presence of the sovereign which seemed almost immediate again in terms of they hardly needed to be consulted. I think the nation at that point appreciated her being present, and particularly William and Harry, and I think that was a unifying force of which there were no politicians who managed that. The royals' numerous visits to the community since the fire formed a thread which has led to their presence at the service, he said, adding, that is wonderful that there is recognition at that level. And as I said it was one of the only unifying forces and at these times I guess we are more thankful we have a royal family and its place within our society. A green for Grenfell banner adorned with a heart was carried in as a hymn was sung at the start of the service, before the very relevant Dr. David Dyson, Dean of St. Paul's, welcomed the congregation. He said, Among us are survivors of the fire in Grenfell Tower exactly six months ago, those who have lost members of their families or their friends, those who live or work in North Kensington as neighbors and members of the local community, those who served others as frontline responders or volunteers, or who assisted with the immediate tasks of coping with the losses of lives, homes and livelihoods, and there are representatives of our national life, because this is a nation that grieves at the unspeakable tragedy, loss and hurt of that June day. The welcome also includes all of you watching on national television 
among whom are those painfully affected who could not face such a public event, those who would have liked to be here in solidarity, those whose hearts go out to the many whose lives have been lost or changed forever. In this service we come together as people of different faiths and none, as we remember before God those whose lives were lost, and pray for them to be at peace as we are alongside brothers and sisters who have lost their homes and their community and those they love, as we commit ourselves to care for each other and to be united in the face of suffering and sorrow, as we seek each other's help and resolve to build on our hopes for a future in which the tragedy that struck the peoples of Grenfell Tower will never happen again, the Bishop of Kensington, the right relevant Graham Tomlin, said he hoped the service would reassure those present that they were not forgotten by the nation and that it would signify the start of a change. He said, as we come to the end of this difficult year, as we celebrate Christmas, as we move into a new year, nothing can remove the memory of that night, nor do we want to forget those dearly loved people who were lost. And yet my hope and prayer is that this new year can bring new hope of a future, a vision of a city where we lose our self-obsession and listen and learn from places and people that we wouldn't normally think of reaching out to. He added that he hoped the word Grenfell would transform over time from a symbol of sorrow, grief or injustice to a symbol of the time we learned a new and better way, to listen and to love. Commemorating the dead, the dean said, let us remember, united in grief and hope and love before the congregation held a minute's silence. An audio montage of voices from the Grenfell area was played to the congregation. A male voice said of the fire, We were lost for words, we did not know what to do, how to react. I have never known anything like it in my life. Another said, The comfort is just being together, the comfort is just having each other. The Al Sadik and Al Zara schools girls choir then sang out the poignant words never lose hope. The service provided families of those who died in the blaze an opportunity for words of healing and truth, a bereaved relative said. Clary Mendy, whose cousin Mary Mendy and her daughter Hadija died in the fire, has been helping shape the multi-faith service, which will focus on remembering the 71 victims of the June 14th Tower Block Blaze. She said she had asked for the event to be held at St. Paul's Cathedral, exactly six months after the fire, and that she hoped the names of the 53 adults and 18 children who died would be read out as a mark of respect and recognition. Ms. Mendy said, I think a lot of people are anticipating and looking forward to this service at St. Paul's. I know there's a lot of expectations. I know there's a lot of diversity from your normal tradition. I just hope this service resonates with people with the hunger people have spiritually. A lot of people, right now there's no trust in the government, a lot of people have more faith and trust in their religion. She went on, I just hope it measures up to everybody's expectations and people will. A lot of family will find healing from the messages, the sermons, and I hope it's soul enriching. I hope there's words that will just echo and resonate, and say, yes, there is empathy, there is humanity, there is hope for the world because I think this service is the platform that can really start to change humanity depending on the right words and, it's a church, people of God, how they convey the message to mankind. I hope I'm just not hoping for too much, but I am expecting a lot from this service, especially words of healing, and of truth. Council leader Elizabeth Campbell was not present at the service after some families said they would not want the council to attend in an official capacity. She said it was only right to respect the wishes of those involved in the service, adding, I want them to know that we will be thinking of them. Metropolitan Police Service Commissioner Cressida Dick said the fire was a tragedy of such a scale it is almost unimaginable and said today was a day when we should all reflect and remember what so many lost that terrible night. She added, My officers and staff are committed to doing everything in our power to support those so deeply affected and to carry out a thorough and effective investigation. Sir Martin Morbick, the judge leading the public inquiry into the blaze, was among those attending the ceremony, joined by lead counsel Richard Miller. His probe has been beset by criticism in recent weeks as survivors and bereaved families called for a panel of experts from a diverse background to sit alongside him. Half a year has passed since a small kitchen fire in West London became the biggest and most devastating blaze in modern British history. Sparked by a faulty fridge on the lower floors of Grenfell Tower, flames raced through the rest of the 24-story building in the early hours of June 14. Some 71 people, including 18 children, 
died in the inferno, which prompted a giant criminal police investigation, painstaking recovery operation and several inquiries. Police continue to investigate the blaze and a forensic examination is expected to continue until the spring. A formal inquiry has also been launched and evidential hearings are expected to begin in the first six months of 2018. The inquiry's first strand will look into events on June 14. It is hoped this will be conducted speedily to help prevent similar fires at high-rise blocks. In the second stage, the refurbishment of the tower will be put under the microscope investigating how and why it came to be wrapped in flammable cladding and insulation. It will also examine why residents' warnings were ignored and look at the response of Kensington and Chelsea Council and central government after the fire.